Sigma Tiger all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Terrible humans everywhere. A mammoth resurrection. Hmm, hasn't been one of those in a while. Toxic sperm and Haiti has fallen. <laughs> Sigma Tiger, or TGIF, everybody. Thank God it is Friday because it's been a long week, terrible news all over the gaff, and it, it only gets worse. So let's uh, dive right in. But before we do, uh, I'm receiving a whole bunch of comments about my goofy mask. It's a tiger, obviously. It's not a dog. But uh, everyone thinks it's goofy. It's silly. Well, guess what? Subscribe so I can get this thing off. Tell your friends. The guy's cool. I like his voice. His cadence is great. He's knowledgeable, but uh, it's a goofy mask, and uh, there it is. So go ahead and subscribe. 10K subscriptions, and I'm out of here. Tiger face, at least. You'll see my beautiful grill. Let's go ahead. Let's dive right in. Terrible humans. Boom. What do we got? Pedophile who tortured, raped, and starved children with his partner is found dead in his prison cell weeks before being sentenced. Andrew Hadwin, 39, and partner Shell Pickles, 35, were convicted last month. Man found guilty of a horrific catalog of abuse against children has been found dead in his prison cell while he awaited sentence. Hadwin and his partner Shell Pickles tormented children over several years, starving them, feeding them soap, and pushing them into boiling hot showers and baths. Seems to be something that goes on, like a, with the terrible parents, like they'll do these things to these children. What kind of trauma did these adults go through, through their life, to have to, uh, you know, inflict this kind of trauma onto a child? My God, like... You know, and like, I don't think anyone's going to miss him, you know. I'm sure uh, someone downstairs in that hot boiler room we call hell is uh, totally having a great time with this jerk. Uh, the couple malnourished the children until they were so hungry that they walked for miles to scavenge through supermarket bins for food. Meanwhile, the pair would order takeaways and make the children watch them eat while forced to stand in stress positions for long periods of time. Other abuse included locking the youngsters in a cupboard and dangling one terrified child over a motorway bridge. The Department of Justice confirmed Hadwin had died, telling Mail Online an investigation was underway. Yeah, likely he was either uh, murdered by another inmate or likely uh, committed suicide for fear of getting tortured while in jail uh, by other people. Because uh, one of the things that inmates don't like is child killers and uh, child uh, abusers. And typically those people get the worst kind of treatment in jail. Department of Justice spokesman said uh, HMP Durham prisoner Andrew Hadwin died on the 2nd of February. As with all deaths in custody, they will investigate. Neighbors have described the couple as creepy and furtive and say they would stop their children from playing outside when they saw them. Adding they used to hear all sorts of strange noises coming from the home. No phone calls to police there. Uh, yeah, no. Nope. Okay, the pair were charged with multiple offenses of child neglect and sexual activity with a child. Absolutely horrendous. Horrific. Uh, he was charged with three counts of rape in relation to a historic abuse of another child, which happened when she was a little girl. On January 18th, he was found guilty of three counts of rape, seven counts of neglect, and one count of perverting the course of justice. He was found not guilty of sexual activity with a child. Um, Hadwin and Pickles of Fishburne County, Durham were convicted of a prolonged campaign of child abuse by a jury at Teesside Crown Court after a lengthy trial. Yeah, so go ahead and uh, hopefully the other misses, uh, you know what I mean, rots in prison. Anyway, I won't be saying uh, God rest their soul because I'm sure the devil's all, all up in that. Transgender pedophile arrested for child pornography advocated for childhood transitioning. So we have another individual here who's absolutely lost the plot. Uh, this is a trans-identified male. A recidivist pedophile residing in Quebec has been arrested in charge of possession of child pornography for the second time. Crystal Lozon, 39, of Val David, was detained on January 11th after officers from the Provincial Police Force's Internet Sexual Exploitation of Children Investigation Team conducted a search of his residence and his computer was seized for forensic analysis. Details of the case are limited. It is known that this is not a Lausanne's first run in with the police for child sexual exploitation material. There is a uh, photo of the individual. 
He was arrested for possession of child abuse materials, but due to COVID-19, there was a cessation in proceedings until 2022, so he had two years free. Uh, he was then sentenced to four years in prison after pleading guilty of production, distribution, and possession, but he appears to have been released sometime before 2023. So he was supposed to have four years, spent less than one, and then he was quickly found to have violated. So there you go. Uh, the liberals feel like, uh, you know, he had served uh, his time. Justice was absolutely served, so let's let him out. And he goes ahead to reoffend because he was not punished appropriately for what he had done. He should go through uh, massive amounts of psychological therapy. Uh, he should be uh, away from public. Okay, he's dangerous. If someone is looking at that kind of material, they are dangerous. I don't care about intent or action. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, that's disgusting behavior, and he's a real offender, so put him in jail for a long time, perhaps forever. Depraved mother and son are charged with sexually abusing children as young as five and live streaming it for money as shaken judge says you shock the court. Okay, this is absolutely uh, the worst possible scenario for any child to have adults, you know, looking after you, meant to take care of you, and just absolutely uh, torturing you. A mother who calls herself a specialist in erectile dysfunction, her son and her boyfriend are behind bars, accused of a litany of child sex abuse charges that left a judge with 25 years on the bench in Florida shocked. This week, police in Boca Raton, along with FBI agents, raided the home that Walkiri Cassini, 38, her son Matthew, 20, and her boyfriend Ryan Londano, 42, all shared. The raid came after a four-month-long investigation. Cassini is accused of sexually abusing two male children, the youngest of which is under 10, and charging online perverts a fee to watch. The abuse of her youngest child began when he was just five, the other when he was nine. The abuse was uploaded to web server documents in the case state. The server, as well as Amazon, Microsoft, PayPal, and Zelle, all cooperated with the investigation. For the past 25 years, I've seen just about everything. So to shock the court's conscience, it, conscience is frankly a difficult proposition at this point in the court's career. The extent of this is probably never going to be known, Judge Donald Hafele said when the trio made their first appearance in court on Wednesday. The mother's boyfriend, Ladano, an IT professional, is facing similar charges. Judge Hafeli did not issue a bond for the couple. Thank God, and that's what all judges should be doing in this case and cases similar to this, no bond. You will remain in jail until your court hearing. There's uh, images of the individuals. Her son is not charged with live streaming abuse, but of sexual abusing the children. He's charged with actual intercourse with the child, the prosecutor said in court. He shook his head in court as the charges were read out. So, depraved adults raising uh, a child who was probably abused up until that point where he was uh, too old to garner any sort of value from these online degenerates. And uh, he joined in the family business of abuse. The cycle continued and uh, God help us all when there's individuals like this like demonic m demonic literally like possessed uh, being influenced by evil spirits to do something like this yeah uh, that's enough so there's terrible humans for you uh, wall street's dei retreat has officially begun so okay so what are they uh, they're planning a retreat to to get this back on the go because a lot of people are saying it's absolute trash and what it's doing is actually separating and uh, creating a, a division. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated has made a surprising change to its Possibility Summit for black college students. It's opened the program to white students. Well, congratulations on the diversity there and inclusion. At Bank of America, course, certain internal programs that used to focus on women and minorities have been broadened to include everyone. Thank goodness. DEI. Uh, and a Bank of New York Mellon Corp executives are being urged to reconsider hard metrics for workforce diversity. Lose them, lawyers have advised. This is what diversity, equity, inclusion looks like on Wall Street today. Anxious, fraught, and changing fast. Yeah, the real diversity, equity, and inclusion is, uh, you know, selecting the best candidate. And that's it. You know, hey, Martin Luther King said it best. Martin Luther King Jr., sorry. Uh, you know to be judged on the content of your character. Maybe that was uh, Kennedy. Who knows? One of these dudes was pretty smart, both of them. 
And uh, yeah, so to be judged on the content of your character, not the color of your skin, okay? Or uh, your color, creed, whatever. If you're a cool dude, you're a cool dude. You're not cool because you got curly hair or dark skin or uh, almond eyes. Those features are interesting and some people find them attractive, but they don't make you cool, especially when you start talking trash. So anyway, yeah, DEI is dead. See you later. Scientist takes a step closer to resurrecting the woolly mammoth. There we go. That's a big one. Biotech company that hopes to resurrect extinct species said Wednesday that it has reached an important milestone, the creation of a long-sought kind of stem cell for the closest living relative of the woolly mammoth. This is probably the most significant step in the early stages of this project, said George Church, a geneticist at Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who co-founded Colossal Biosciences in Dallas. The woolly mammoth was a big, shaggy species of elephant that roamed the tundra before going extinct thousands of years ago. Colossal has been working to bring the mammoth, the dodo bird, and other extinct species back to life using the latest cloning and genetic engineering techniques. And now the company says scientists have for the first time created induced pluripotent stem cells for the mammoth's closest living relative, Asian elephants. The company plans to describe the work in a scientific paper that will be posted on the BioRxIV preprint server. It hasn't been peer-reviewed, but the company says that's in progress. So there you have uh, They're basically... Uh, using the Asian elephant uh, kind of like they did in Jurassic Park when they use like frog DNA and they extracted some out of that uh, ember uh, encapsulated mosquito and uh, yeah well we all know what happened there frogs can uh, shift gender you know what I mean uh, environmentally if there's a need to and uh, yeah, well, hopefully they don't do that and mix it together. But have a have an eye out. We'll keep you posted for woolly mammoths. Houthis kill innocent civilians while, with missile attack at approximately 11:30 a.m. Uh, Sanaa time, March 6th. An anti-ship ballistic missile (ASBM) was launched from Iranian-backed Houthi terrorist-controlled areas of Yemen towards MV True Confidence, a Barbados-flagged Liberian owned bulk carrier, while transiting the Gulf of Aden. The missile struck the vessel. And the multinational crew reports three fatalities and four injuries, of which three are in critical condition and significant damage to the ship. The crew abandoned the ship and coalition warships responded and are assessing the situation. The fifth ASBM fired by Houthis in the last two days. Two of these ASBMs impacted two shipping vessels, MV MSC Sky 2 and the MV True Confidence, and one ASBM was shot down by USS Kearney. These reckless attacks by the Houthis have disrupted global trade and taken the lives of international seafarers. And yeah, that's part of the reason why uh, some of these uh, banks, you know, these federal banks, are choosing to keep interest rates uh, at a level because they're like, oh man, well, what happens if something crazy happens over there? You know, the economy is going to go crazy and we don't have to be a flip flopping. So we're just going to wait with Canada, uh, Tiff, whatever his name is, Mackey or McAfee, or whatever. He decided that he's going to keep it straight. He's saying, mm, well, these Houthis are down there causing interest, uh, or sorry, shipping rates to skyrocket. They're killing people now. We are at 11.56. We are four minutes closer. A lot of people believe that we're actually there. World War III started because uh, German uh, troops were going to take out Crimea Bridge or something like that. And as well, uh, they're directing attacks. There's going to be UK troops there, if not already. So we're pretty close. Congress strips funding from LGBTQ group over sex parties. All right, well, here we go again. Lawmakers have stripped over a million dollars in federal funding for an LGBTQ organization in Philadelphia after conservatives attacked it for allegedly hosting sex parties. Absolutely inappropriate. The move came after the offices of uh, Pennsylvania Senators John Fetterman and Bob Casey sent letters to appropriators on Tuesday requesting that they cut the earmark from the budget legislation that is expected to pass this week. The money would have paid for an expansion of Philadelphia's William Way LGBT Community Center, which provides social services and hosts cultural events, drag shows. Uh, William Way had come under attack from conservatives earlier on Tuesday when the influential right-wing ex-account Libs of TikTok posted about BDSM-themed events at the center. So even worse than a drag show. You know, completely sexual, you know. And uh, it was been hosted for several years, describing them as... Uh, Sex kink parties, the exact circumstances that led to the funding being dumped, appeared somewhat murky. However, after Fetterman told Semaphore that 
he had not approved the letter from his office. Interesting. It wasn't my decision, he said Wednesday, adding he still 100, or sorry, 1,000% supported funding the center. It was a perfunctory letter that was issued by the staff. I was not part of the process. So we're familiar? Okay, yeah. So he's uh, saying, oh, no, 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 no. I'm totally for these uh, BDSM parties. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. And he's, like, upset that they're talking about, uh, you know, libs of TikTok. He's probably against that person. And, you know, a lot of people are because they're exposing behavior patterns in humans and in this transgender ideology and this LGBT uh, umbrella as a whole as some really uh, interesting behavior patterns uh, that are going on. And they should be... Uh, everyone should be aware of it, you know? Like, all she was doing in the beginning was reposting TikToks of these people. She didn't have much commentary or opinion about them, as she does now, because they've doxxed her, and you can find out more about her, and people are trying to blame murders on or, or deaths on her and things like this and whatever. Anyway, God bless uh, Reina Chiak, or however you pronounce your name. Uh, we'll just keep it at uh, the lib libs of TikTok. All right, is your uh, sperm toxic? Maybe. Well, uh, there's a sperm toxin in your pancake mix. Heads up, if you're into pancakes... Chemical War Against Men is on, even at the Pancake House. You have the uh, stack, your classic stack with some butter and syrup. Let's go ahead and look. Sodium aluminum phosphate. I discovered this morning is in the Great Value brand pancake mix in my pantry. And if you're unaware about Great Value, that is a Walmart brand. And uh, I'm not sure if they manufacture it, but they source it. That's their house brand. And it is full of uh, terrible things, okay? Uh, their chips, for instance, if you read at the bottom, it says, like, it has carcinogens in it and stuff. And uh, we're only letting you know because we sell it in California. And they're the only place that says this is bad. So California's pretty good for some things. Uh, when I looked this ingredient up, the safety handling sheet shows this additive to be highly toxic to eyes, skin, lungs, in terms of external exposure. Peer-reviewed published studies, including the R.A. Yokel Aluminum Reproductive Toxicity. A summary and interpretation of a scientific report show that ingesting alumina derivatives causes reproductive damage in mammals right away, especially males. It damages the fetus and placenta in pregnant female rats and mice, and it damages sperm in male rats and mice and lowers their blood testosterone levels. Male reproductive endpoints were significantly affected after exposure to low levels of a, uh, AL, uh, I'm assuming it's a AL, and then females increased a AL intake, increased uh, fetus, placenta, and testes AL concentrations to greater extent in the placenta than fetus, and in some cases more in the testes than placenta. An adverse outcome pathway was constructed for males based on the results of the reviewed studies. The proposed AOP includes oxidative stresses as a molecular, molecular initiating event and increased malodialdehyde DNA and spermatozoal damage and decreased blood testosterone and sperm count as subsequent key events. So, uh, yeah, great value, and their uh, pancakes are jacked up. Don't eat them, and check to see if you can see any aluminum, sodium, aluminum phosphate in your food. Check it out and get it out. North Face offers discount for customers taking equity course that says black people can't enjoy the outdoors. Well, why not? Why not? You know, I see black people outside all the time having a good time. North Face Company is offering customers a discount if they complete an equity course that teaches how white people never experience racism. Hmm. Well, that's not entirely true. I experience racism on uh, all the time, uh, and I'm white, and it's directed towards me. I've I've been called a cracker, and a honky, several times, and like you know, I don't care. Whatever, like call me whatever you want. Call me the tiger, the big sig tig. But guess what? The North Face thinks that uh, there's a problem with that. Parent company, VF Corporation, launched a racial equity course that states how white people never experience hardship due to the color of their skin and that black people are barred from outdoor activities because of systemic racism and oppression. <laughs> the course, which offered customers 20% off for learning about anti-racism for one hour, contained elements of critical race theory. According to the Heritage Foundation DEI expert Mike Gonzalez, it was the longest hour I ever lived, <laughs> Gonzalez said. Uh, yeah, the DI expert added uh, that the course was an outrageous attempt at convincing people we live under an oppressive system of racial injustice, particularly in the mountains. White people can't experience racism. Privilege can give us access to the outdoors. 
This means that some people can enjoy advantages that they inherit from birth and or accumulate over time. For example, aspects of identity that can give privilege related to race, religion, gender, wealth, sexual orientation, ability of citizenship status. The course stated in this particular context, we refer to white privilege, meaning that your race and skin color can give you access to the outdoors when others can be excluded because of historic enduring racism bias, like absolute trash. What are they talking about? It's like that Mrs. The other day who got uh, canned. We covered yesterday, I believe. And, uh, she had an idea about privilege that like if you're white cisgender heterosexual christian male then you are literally the problem that's white privilege like whiteness like you can't help but be uh the worst thing ever and you're born that way and imagine being told that as a child like oh hey you're white yeah that sucks you suck you make everyone's life garbage and oh you're straight you're a little heterosexual okay yeah 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 that's a problem too you probably hate gays oh you're you're a conservative and a christian oh my god like we need to get this person and lock them up because they're gonna stop uh stop me from doing what i want to do out in public in front of children they messed it up biden's backing for haiti's unpopular leader digs u.s into deeper policy hole well we covered this the other day uh a bunch of thugs, a bunch of gangs went in and busted out uh, two of the biggest prisons. Like 4,000 inmates just left, walked out. And uh, what's going on? Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry filled the void left by the assassination of the country's president in 2021. He did so over the protests of wide segments of the population, but with the full-throated support of the Biden administration, of course, he was installed. Now, almost three years later, Henry's grip on power is hanging by a thread, and Washington is confronted by even worse choices as it scrambles to prevent the country's descent into anarchy. They messed it up deeply, James Foley, a retired career diplomat and former U.S. ambassador to Haiti, said in an interview about the Biden administration's support for Henry, they rode this horse to their doom. It's the fruit of the choices we made. The embattled prime minister left Haiti 10 days ago and has since crisscrossed the world from South America to Africa to New York, now Puerto Rico, all while staying silent as he tries to negotiate a return home that seems increasingly unlikely. The power vacuum has been exacerbated by the almost complete withdrawal of police from key state institutions and a mass escape of hundreds of murders, thousands, kidnappers, and other violent offenders from the country's two biggest prisons over the weekend. Haiti remained paralyzed Thursday after another night of attacks on police stations and other targets by armed groups that have vowed to force Henry's res resignation. The country's acting prime minister, filling in for Henry while he's abroad, extended a poorly enforced nighttime curfew through Sunday. Stubborn U.S. support for Henry is largely to blame for the deteriorating situation, says Monique Kleska, a Haitian writer and member of the Montana Group, a coalition of civil, business, and political leaders that came together in the wake of the uh, Hovenel Moises murder to promote a Haitian-led solution that uh, protracted crisis. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, you know, they installed this guy for whatever reason, whatever they got going on down there, and he was uh, corrupt, and his government is uh, not doing what they're supposed to do. And guess what? the gangs took over what's the problem down there why can't why why don't they literally just go in there and round them all up and uh, lock them up Be like okay start processing these people if you like they just come in and say okay well it's anarchy already so we're gonna come in and we're gonna lock this place down okay the military's here the u.s is coming in we're taking over haiti it's going to become like puerto rico okay but first we're coming in and we're going to gate off this area and we're building a massive pentopticon. This giant uh, prison, okay? That uh, all of the cells are on the outside and surveillance is on the inside. Okay? Check it out. It's the best form of rehabilitation there is because you're always being watched. Okay? You don't need as many guards. And with AI and computers and all that kind of stuff should be available. We should be able to rehabilitate all these criminals. Okay? It's called conditioning. Pavlov's dog. Ring the bell. The dog begins to salivate. You know, reward these people with good things and wholesome uh, lifestyle choices and behavior, not guns, violence, and sex and drugs. Okay? And, yeah, so get in there, build the pentopticons all over the place, and uh, just like Sauron's eye, scare the public, whatever it takes, and say, okay, listen, we're watching everyone, and if you guys misbehave, then that's it. And then turn the eyes off. No one's watching the population anymore, but the prisons are still there. Okay? That's it. Round up all the criminals. And basically all you got to say is like, if you are found to be in criminal possession of any of these laws that we establish, then we are literally going to put you in one of these buildings. Okay? And we're going to be running this program for several years until we catch all of you people. And then that's it. 
but good luck removing the surveillance after it's installed. But the Panopticons are a great idea. And good luck to Haiti because, uh, you know, Haiti has fallen 100%. And you can thank Joe Biden and uh, his installed leader for that. Go ahead. Like, subscribe. Let's get this mask off. Everyone's complaining about how goofy I look. They love the voice. They love the content. They don't like the mask. So maybe we'll switch it to like 10,000 hours viewed, 10,000 likes, something like that. We'll check the metrics, see if we can get this beautiful man off. I'll confront the wife and see if maybe a thousand subscribers or something like that is adequate. Anyway, we're not giving up. TikTok, TikTok Tiger, signing off.